Hey guys, I'm Nat. And I'm Ashton. And we, we are the Nerds in Flannel. It has been a minute. Dude, it's it been, has oh, been a minute. It's been like, almost a month. It like, literally had... since the last episode. <laughs> right. Before we started filming, we were just like, dang, when was the last time we recorded? It's like, oh, the day before Valentine's Day. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, that was a while back, too. Yeah, that was like February 13th. A whole February... <gasps> 13. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Only the real Swifties get it. Wait, do I get it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah <laughs> okay. there you go. Okay, I totally get it, guys. <laughs> totally. I totally get it. Totally. Dude, how's it going? Dude, it's good. Yeah. Hey, we made it through February. We did. It's all that matters. Just barely, but we, we survived. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh. <laughs> I saw this like meme on Instagram where it was like, I'm trying this new challenge called February where I try to get through every day of February. <laughs> <laughs> I relate to that on a spiritual level. Dude, February is just not a good month for a lot of people. February is just not it. <laughs> it means like the, you get the sads and, you know. Just... And here in friggin' British Columbia, we get like full on like rain and snowstorms randomly without like any sun. I can think of two days where we actually had sun this month. Yeah, like today and like three days ago. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. Ashley, what are we talking about today? I have a question for you. A really important question oh, for you. But yeah. first... Let's throw it back a little bit. Oh, yes. Let's throw it back. It's been a while since we've done this, man. <laughs> okay, on the count of three? Yep. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. We haven't done that since, like, oh, sorry. Uh, we haven't done that since, like, season one, I think. Yeah, something Pretty like that. Pretty sure. That's crazy. Also, I'd just like to apologize to uh, all the headphone users up there. So sorry. You or gotta... people with, like, really good car speakers. Yeah, true. You guys are the real ones Sorry, staying Dad. through that. <laughs> uh, okay, here's my important question. Nat, yeah, what, you uh, what, you, what, what you watching? What you watching, baby? What you watching? Um, hmm. I'm as well, I'm as well as well as the most recent movie I saw. Oh, um, I watched Creed 3 with my dad last night. Hey. Um, obviously, it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a spinoff of the Rocky franchise, which I love. I love Rocky so much. I, I, more, than, more than the regular person. Because I remember when I was like first into like film and stuff. That's all I watched. I just watched the Rocky movies because you know it's actually the first one's actually like technically really good. Dang. And uh, Creed three was um do it was pretty it was really good it was pretty it was like a predictable storyline, but the acting was amazing. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, Tessa Thompson, Jonathan Majors, and um everyone was really good. And um, it was it was the first movie first sports movie shot in IMAX I didn't watch it in IMAX Ooh. but even like in just the regular theater like the 999 theater you pay um it was really it was really good looking Dang. and I kind of always want to go watch it again for IMAX because the final fight scene dude that would looks it, so good in would IMAX. it be cool in like D-Box I'm just thinking about the Batman with all like the punches mm. it was just like would it be honestly like... there's not much boxing in this movie <laughs> 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 it's, Dang. A, it's a lot of them just like talking and being mad at each other and then they box like twice <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny not gonna lie dang dude yeah but q3 dope. give it a give it a check we'll go check it out might have to so ashton what you've been watching what you've uh, been wa- what you're watching i'll go with the thing the most recent thing i've i watched uh right before i came here sat down with my family Finally got around to watching oh, yes. Marcel the Shell with shoes on. So good. Dude. Okay. I think here's kind of my take on it. Mm-hmm. Goaded film. It's a film. It's not classified mm-hmm. as anything less than a film. But for casual viewers, I don't think they'll find it as entertaining. Yeah, skip out if you're not if you're casual. I watched this with like a lot of members of my family with like my two brothers, my mom, uh, my brother's girlfriend and uh, one of my uh, and my brother's other friends. And they kind of just like were like, what? What what was this? Why why was that entertaining? And then there's me like weeping at a movie about a shell, dude. I was like a mess. Uh, No, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, Like if if you're really into like stop motion then you'll find this like a really cool movie. I know Nat talked about it a ton in September or was it September? No, not, not even September in the summer, like in August. Yeah, dude, that movie came out a long That movie came out a while ago. It finally just got into prime uh, here in the can- Canadian sphere. I don't know. Uh, sure. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I watched uh, most recently and it was really great. Lived up to the hype. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Good to watch. Actually, 
Academy Award nominated film Marcel with the shell with shoes on. Yes, that is actually exactly how I pitched it to my family. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't want to watch the Oscars now. But you know what? Hey, they're gonna. They're probably gonna watch it anyway since we're having a thing at your house. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they'll probably be downstairs saying, "Who won? Who won? Who won? Who won? Will yeah. Smith? Wait, he's back. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> slaps? What? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm still looking forward to the Oscars. Actually, Oscars are in a week. One week. Seven days. Really? One week? Okay. Well, we will get a predictions episode out really soon. What time is the Oscars? Um, 5.30. No way. I'm going to be late, but that's okay. Dang. I'll be late, but I will, I will try to make it. It's okay. Time. Well, wait. Sorry. Quick meeting time on, on the on the uh, podcast. Oh, you're going to... Yeah. What do we need to talk about? Are you leaving tomorrow? What do you mean? Like, are you going home tomorrow? Um, Not till the evening. Why? So hypothetically, I watched the last movie I need to for like the predictions thing. You want to record predictions tomorrow afternoon? Sure can. Bet. Well, sorry, yeah, you. I know my plans. Quick, uh, <laughs> quick nerd and flannel. Quick nerd and flannel meeting. Uh, anyway, back on track. Now, mm-hmm. what you watching? Um, okay, it's something I want to talk about, but oh, can I talk about it? Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about is it. Is it the one I'm thinking of? I don't know. Do we see it together? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about it. Cocaine Bear. Yes. We saw Cocaine Bear the other day. <laughs> now, going to this film, we I you know I kind of expected like a slapstick comedy with I a bear too. demolishing people, and that's pretty much what we got. <laughs> 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 but it's actually kind of funny, it, dude. Honestly, like, there. <laughs> If you listen to the pod for a while, you know I'm not really good with like horror or jump scares, and this was like my max of what I can handle. I think. No, dude, I, <laughs> dude. So we were watching during we, before the movie. There was this trailer for Evil Dead Rise. Dude, I saw you like, I saw him like like jumping in the seat. A little I know. Bit. <laughs> Actually, that's a movie that I'm gonna go by myself because I don't think anybody wants to see that with me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, unfortunate, but um, Cocaine Bear. Yeah, <laughs> Cocaine Bear. It was a lot of fun. Sorry, my, I also have a lingering cough. Um, no, it was a lot of fun. I think the the reason why it worked for me because it was just it knew exactly what it wanted it to be, and it didn't take itself too seriously at all. Yeah, uh, I think that's really important when you have a movie like that, especially when you market it as a movie that's called Cocaine Bear. Um, it's funny. It's pretty. It's really gory too. <laughs> it's really gory, dude. All I was thinking about at the like at, like as I was reflecting on the movie more. Yogi Bear. It feels like a horror version of Yogi Bear. Oh, speaking of horror bears, yeah. we should go watch uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Oh, I think it's in a few theaters. <laughs> I will check on that shortly. <laughs> Dude. Uh, okay. Believe it or not, I got talked into, to go, like, into going to see it again on Tuesday. Cocaine Bear? Yeah. Bat. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Somehow, someway. Uh yeah no I it, it was a movie it was a movie uh yeah I honestly I think you enjoyed it more than I did oh it's like it's, it's my I movie. definitely like was like after I left like okay say what you will but that was actually like for it's Elizabeth Banks like first like directorial debut I believe yeah and that was incredible Perfect for a directorial yeah. debut it's like it you, was shot pretty well for a movie like that yeah, yeah. and even like the pacing. Like, in some cases, it felt a little off, but kind of, like, the main chunk of the story was actually, like, it flowed really well. It flowed really well. It did, yeah. And then things would happen kind of, like, earlier in the movie, and then you'd kind of see them play out, like, later in the movie, and it was it was pretty good. It was yeah. well thought out. It was well thought out. Very well thought out. Good job, Elizabeth. Good job. I was going to say good find, but that's not really a find. Mm, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, Ashley, what you been watching? Okay, uh, you know what? I'll just go into something that we've both been watching. And mm-hmm. also, I'd like to clarify. It's been a while since we've done one of these episodes, and we're not going to talk about everything that we've seen since, like, friggin' December. all the way back in, like, December. Yeah. Sorry uh, about that. Sorry about that. We'll just go over the highlights and things that, I mean, for me, things I can think of off the top of my head. Um, yeah, so something that we've both been watching lately. Another thing. Uh, is this a TV show? It is. Uh, it is probably... I think it's. I have to redo my list because it's probably top three for me at this point. Really? Uh, finale is like one of the most important parts of a TV show. So next week we'll have to find out how that all settles. Yep. The Last of Us. Yes. My sir. goodness, dude. Yes, sir. This this show. Uh, okay. 
Also, a side note, there is a 10 o'clock showing of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> we crashed in at your place. Oh, we'll just, I'll just drive back. <laughs> Dang. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Yeah, the last of us. Sorry. But yeah, so the last of us. Okay. Uh, honestly, I think we should. Uh, honestly, I feel like we have enough content to make a whole uh, like different special episode on this. Oh, we're going to after this. We will. We will. Uh, but this show just blows my mind. It emotionally violates me every time I open myself up every Sunday evening to watching the latest episode. Which we still have to watch tonight. Yeah, we Okay, well, we'll watch that. We okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, it is... It's incredible. It's, it's really good, it's a really It's really beautifully shot. It, the storytelling, like, adapted from a video game, it works. Like, video game movies have a history of being, like, so bad. That means it's not a movie. It's a TV show. Because you can flesh it out. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I started thinking about more and more as we were getting into it. I was like, they actually, like, take time with each episode. And there are parts, like, from in the game that I feel like we're a little rushed in the show. But that's it doesn't matter because if you see them as two different things, it's like, oh my gosh, this is like a masterpiece. Plus, if you played the game, you know the backstory, so you don't need everything. They yeah. don't need to like spoon feed you anything. So and like they have like different and they they take creative liberties. Like it's not just a replicate, like a replication of like the game in any way. They take creative liberties and flesh out certain things. Like all well, of episode kind of for three, the better, not gonna lie. which is for the better for yeah. sure. Yeah. Dang. Hey, know. it's that's... really good. Uh, Bella Ramsey's amazing as Ellie. Yeah. Honestly, she like everyone was complaining that she didn't look like Ellie. And I kinda have to agree she doesn't really look like Ellie from the games. Yeah, not at all. But it's it's Ellie. Yeah. She she acts like Ellie. Um, she sounds like Ellie too a little bit, so Plus I think it'd be like really boring if they acted exactly how we expected them to act from the games. Like with Ellie, there's certain things about her character where in the context of the show, you'd expect her to act a little different than Ellie in the games does. Right. And I think that's kind of exactly how it works. So, yeah, she's incredible. Yeah, and obviously, uh, Daddy Pascal. Ooh. Dude, still good. Internet Zaddy. <laughs> He's, uh, Pedro Pascal is really good in the show. He is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a different episode. We'll do a whole dedicated... Once this thing's... Once the show's done next week. Next so we'll week. be after... Uh, it'll be... Maybe like first episode of season three. Yeah. Because I think for seasons, we do like after the Oscars. I think that's just a good... That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah, yeah it is. It, it's incredible. Uh, if if you've been sleeping on it, like, and Don't. you're you're mature enough to like get into some sketchier themes, unless you're not and you listen to our podcast and you're like 15. Yeah, then then you you, you don't have that right. Then you don't have that. We should right. say that. I, we should clarify. We should clarify that. Like, yeah. it is rated like. I would say it, it would is be it 14 a or I would say 14. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing really I would say that would make it like 18A or R yet. Yeah, nothing really. But it could. It could. Uh <laughs> Yeah, man. Not me thinking about strawberries differently. Going to cry on the podcast, not dude. Strawberries. <laughs> not strawberries. Nope. Uh anyway, Nat, what you watching? <laughs> why are we why are we crying about that one episode? If you know if you seen episode 3, you know. It's too it's kind of weird that we're crying about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thing, um, what have I been watching lately? Okay, we might as well talk about something that we've both seen. Sure. Uh, I'm a big M Night Shyamalan fan. Oh yeah. And we saw Knock at the Cabin. Yeah. With uh, Jonathan Groff and Dave Bautista and what's his face from Harry Potter. It was actually I I think I enjoyed it because we went with our friend Maya. Shout out Maya. Um, and I think out of all of us, I think I enjoyed it the most. Probably uh, just because. It, it does have that thriller aspect to it and the kind of like a horror aspect to it as well, and which I really like, which is kind of what M. Night Shyamalan does. Keeps you on your toes. Like, it was... I was... T- t- it was a pretty intense movie. I was on the edge of my seat the entire movie. Because, you know, it's about um a family trying to save the apocalypse, but you don't know if they're actually like, the key to saving the apocalypse. And I won't spoil the ending. Um, Yeah. Dude, it was... Yeah, no. It was I, shot really well, too. I didn't really know what to expect from that movie, like when we walked into the theater, and that's something I really enjoy. Like I've been enjoying lately. It's like, what am I trailers. gonna expect? Uh, and like I know, like we've seen the trailer for this, um, like in theaters and whatever. Yeah. But even still, it was so vague. It was like, oh my gosh, are these like, is this like a movie about a bunch of like axe murders or like, is this like, what's going on? And then as the movie kind of starts to unravel, you're like, what's what's? 
And then you just get like this, like very interestingly told like apocalyptic story. And it's, yeah, I don't know. It was like, it was a movie. I didn't hate it. It's not making my top 10 list anytime soon. No, it's, but... it's not, but it's, um, it's probably M. Night Shyamalan's best, best looking movie. Best looking. Yeah. Um, way better than the last airbender. So dang, we don't talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I thought it was, uh, yeah, I thought it, I thought it was okay. Like and very well acted too. Very well acted. Yeah. Dave Bautista, dude, I'm like, I'm really watching his career as an actor now, because I think out of all the WWE actors to like make the transition from like WWE to like more script, well, I guess script, I can't really say scripted, but to like more film. concrete yeah. like film and t- television and all that. He's actually like blowing me away. Yeah, he's really good. He's got I mean, range. there's not really two of them. There's only him and The Rock. Yeah, well, John Cena. Oh, yeah. I forgot about it. I, can't, I just can't see him. Yeah, just can't just see can't him. See just can't him. see him. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yeah, he's he's blowing me away lately. It's good. Yeah. And Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is coming out very soon. Not me crying at Guardians. Yeah, not us, cr- not us two cool men crying at Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> Volume 3. Oh my gosh, May is going to be an interesting month. Are we going to do that in IMAX? I think we would have to. We, we have to. Yeah. Or VIP. Ooh, we haven't done that since Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, we'll what's, see. A, what's a good movie coming out soon that's going to be like VIP worthy? Um, Guardians. Probably Guardians, yeah. What's coming out in April? I feel like an important movie is coming out in April. Mario movie? That's not an IMAX one though. Hmm. That may be a VIP no, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's a nine ninety nine movie. That's a nine ninety nine. That's a, a Cine Club movie right there. Yeah. Um okay. Yeah, Ashley, what you've been watching. While we're on the subject of things we've watched together. I mean I think we're just I think that's the thing now. That's just kind of the thing. We, we, run we, out of we have watched a lot of stuff together. It's true. It's um, is this mine? Yeah, this is mine. Actually, this is one that we didn't see together, but we both saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Yes. I don't know. Is it worth doing an episode on this? No. Yeah, I don't know. It's like maybe we could do a wider MCU update thing, but like I don't think it deserves a dedicated episode. (laughs) No, like this movie was, it was weird. Yeah. But like I I still had a good time. Yeah. I know a lot of people hate this movie and I know some people who love this movie and I can go either really both ways. I really don't care. It's kind of like, kind of feels like any, every other Ant-Man movie. Yeah. Um, Ashton, what are your thoughts? I'm kind of on the same page where I, I'm indifferent. Mm-hmm. Like I don't understand the hordes of people that are like, oh my gosh, burn the whole thing down. But I also don't understand the people that are like, what are you talking about? This is like the greatest thing since Endgame. Yeah. It's just like, it just feels like another Marvel movie. And I will yeah, say, I, I guess I am a little disappointed because there was an aspect of like, oh my gosh, Kang the Conqueror, what's gonna happen? Uh, and just like, yeah, some things in the ending that were like, hmm, that was a weird creative decision, but okay, they did it. Yeah. So what am I going to do? Can't, can't tra- tra- like time travel and change it. <laughs> it's not end game. Wish we could. Wish, wish we, we could. could. Also, can I just say something? Can I ran a little bit for one second? Yeah, go for it. Back to like people hating this movie and like people loving this movie. Uh, I'm so sick. I know I can't. I've ranted to you about this before. Yeah. But I need to do it on the pod. I'm so sick of people thinking that Marvel movies are like the magnum, magnum opus of movies. Yeah. They're just they're comic book movies. People, they're not they're not gonna be the best movie you've ever seen in your life. They're comic book movies about superheroes with raccoons and trees. They're not gonna be the greatest <laughs> movies. Why are we so critical about these movies? Yeah. They're like go watch a real okay. Go watch a real movie. Oh, oh, he said it. He said really? it. Go, he said it. It's go, getting hot. It's go, getting hot. It's getting hot. Watch a real movie. Like, Actually, literally. I'm just putting on a full strip show. Watch anything <laughs> by Christopher Nolan. Those are real movies. I think by Quentin Tarantino. What about The Dark Knight Rises? Hey, that's a, that's a good... That's, it is, it is. That's better than anything in the MCU. <laughs> hot take. Wow. Actually, no. Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 is really good. <laughs> and the game is really good. Okay, it's better than like... It's better than like a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay, go watch, go watch freaking uh, The Godfather. Watch a real movie. Dang. Or if you really want to get old about it, watch like Metropolis. That's like the first big movie. Or watch Citizen Kane. Actually, that's a it's a really good movie. I just yeah. don't get it why it's so good. Um, <laughs> watch a real movie. Stop taking these comic book movies so seriously. They're about comic books. For goodness. <laughs> 
Okay, I have a question for, okay. pe- for for everyone who's about to be like, oh my gosh, Nat, you're so like in the wrong here. You're so stupid. You're an idiot. We should like, make this real on pod. Instagram. Just I want to become Ashton's uh, new co-host. Like, get out of here. For anyone who's thinking that, um, the the job offer isn't there yet. So sorry. Uh, and they get also, wrecked. Name like, name me like two popular westerns. Like, do it, do it. Bet you can't. And here's the reason why. Westerns were kind of like the Fistful comic book movie of like the kind of when films started getting into like big franchises and big all this stuff. Westerns were like the big thing. And nowadays, the average person can't name like two or three off the top of their head. A uh, fistful of doll- uh, hey, You can. <laughs> but the average person that <laughs> would average. like go to see like a Marvel movie can't. So my thinking, and this, this is kind of my hot take part, Blizzard is Saddles. in the future and I'm a Marvel fan. I'm a DC fan. I love I love comic books. That's that's kind of what started this whole like cinema obsession. Uh, really, that's how start for you. Big reason. Big we reason. should start. We should do an episode on like we how we started. We should do an episode on that. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing: like a lot of those, like these movies that exist now that are kind of just like being put out. And I'm not saying they're all money grabs, but I'm saying they do make a lot of money. They do. And there's probably more of them like out that than should exist. We don't really remember like. The real like we only remember the really really good ones. We don't really remember like all the other ones that are kind of like flooding in. So my guess is within like the next fifty years, that generation probably won't be able to name two Marvel movies off the top of their heads. Just just a prediction. We can come back to that. We'll see. Also, another thing to all those people who think you're movie critics because you watch all the MC movies. Shut up. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay, leave it to the real nerds, okay? I love how people, like, who's never read a comic in their life, like, oh, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, actually it does, because it's in the comics, and MODOK is that ridiculous, okay? <laughs> yeah, actually, he's even more ridiculous. Yeah. I'm, surpr- I'm I'm upset that they didn't make him more ridiculous. That's I was like, my complaint. that's how he looks? I'm like, how do you expect him to Dude, look? Dude, he's kind of thick, though. Yeah, he's, he's kind of dummy thick. Do you see that ass in <laughs> that one short? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, it was like two seconds of, a, of them like oh it was so gross that was MODOK right there that's MODOK that's <laughs> hashtag our, that's our MODOK <laughs> <laughs> sorry about saying ass on the podcast <laughs> maybe we'll boot that out sorry oh, I, dad I, I did her in the earlier episodes it's okay okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a fine line now there's a fine but line but like yeah if you think you're a movie critic because you watch the MCU movies I totally just heard you say booty critic <laughs> Booty Craig? I totally heard you just say that. So they call me in high school. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're good. Oh, God. Um, I'm so sorry, Dad. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If you think you're a movie critic, please watch the MC movies. Get a life, honestly. Yeah. Like, like watch watch a real movie. <laughs> you're what's wrong with this industry. Yeah. You're you're the why we you're the reason why we can't talk to some people at school because <laughs> never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Damn, this turned into a whole therapy I'm session. I'm so sorry. I'm 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 inventing today. <laughs> it's okay. It, it it's has to come week. out. It has to come out. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So that's uh our short review of uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. Um. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's just hope Guardians is better. That that's like my whole tagline of that movie. Let's hope Guardians, hope Guardians is better. Is better. <laughs> it probably will be. It's not a okay. very high bar. Here, here's another thing that went on with this movie. One, one last quick thing before we get back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> a so big sorry. reason why I think it was kind of like mediocre. A lot of the design decisions and art in the quantum realm didn't make a lot of sense. There's just a lot of things wrong about it. And the reason why isn't because they're just like being creative with it. They didn't have the friggin' time because they put everyone working priority on Wakanda forever. So then they could rush this one out or rush that out first and then rush this one out. Wakanda, Wakanda be- forever oh was an amazing looking movie. Yes. But holy frick, like, first of all, let people have breaks. Don't overwork people. Yeah, Marvel. Second of all. If you're going to make a movie and you want to make it to the best of your ability, don't just like do what you did with this and like force it on and be like last minute labor, get it done, get it looking like comparable or something that we can put out. Who cares if you have a family and kids at home? Yeah, exactly. Who cares if little Jimmy needs a leg transplant? You can't go to the hospital. You have to work on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. All right, man. I don't know. But not not based on a true story. Just like, <laughs> like that, that got dark real quick. <laughs> that got so dark. <laughs> that did. 
Anyway. Who cares if your dad's dying in the hospital? Work on this. <laughs> we, need, we need Modoc's butt to look so good. <laughs> Dude, it has to look juicy and thick. And you what? No, wait a minute. That's Never exactly how it looked in the movie. It did. We're not, we're not being weird. That's how it looked in the movie. We're, we're getting that explicit E put on this episode. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Spotify, please don't E explicit us, please. Please don't. Please don't. Uh, anyway, now what you watching? <laughs> I'm watching the cinema industry burn in front of my eyes. <laughs> Dang. Oh my gosh. My favorite movie is Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's better than any other movie ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just had a really big discussion about it with someone last week. So I'm, I'm kind of good. Um, so please forgive me. <laughs> wow. We should just do a whole hot takes episode. That would be so entertaining. Dude, every, every day for me is a hot take. <laughs> I'll wake up hot take. I go to bed hot take. <laughs> Seems about right. Seems about right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So now, what you watching? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can talk about this one because you've seen this one too. Cool. Um, Academy Award nominated film, Woman Talking. Oh my gosh! Yes. Okay, let's so, talk about something happy for a minute. Not here. really. It's not really. Okay, no, 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 no. That I I messed up the phrasing. I messed <laughs> up the phrasing. Let's talk about a movie we both enjoyed more than Quantum Media. Yes. Yes. That's the phrasing. Um, movie's not happy. No, movie's so dark. Holy it's crap. It's really dark. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much because I kind of want people to just, you know, go into this without knowing too much. Yeah. But it's about a colony of women. What, what year is this? 2015 or something like that? Something like that. In modern day. Yeah. They're kind of like... They're like Mennonites. Yeah, the Mennonites. Yeah. And um, obviously, uh, I can't say the word because we're going to get demonetized. But... Uh, um, Men taking advantage of women. Yeah. Um, if you know, you know. Um, it's about that and about also um, like religion. Yeah. Which for us is obviously hits home really hard because, you know, Bible college students. Yeah. And uh, wh- this movie was pretty incredible. Um, there's not the it shot very well. Yeah. Uh, but my favorite part was just the script. Um, it's mostly talking, hence women, women talking. talking. And it's probably one of the best like screenplays of this year i don't know if it got nominated for screenplay but i'll check that in a minute um ash what do you think yeah it's dude this movie hard to watch, this dude. movie blew me away it was really hard to watch and i know like okay we mentioned it before february hasn't exactly been the easiest month for us nope january was a little rough too so we kind of both put off seeing this movie and then i was finally like okay it leaves theaters in like a few days i'm just gonna go see it um and then you saw it like shortly after when you could rent it yeah i rented it because i had a free movie <laughs> rental because i watch all the movies yeah thanks cineflex which hey we we're i think i got a free movie for that so we were both financially oh yeah let's go also it did get nominated for a uh, best adapted screenplay because it's based on a book yeah which is it just blows my mind <clears throat> and yeah you know i think if you're going through a hard time don't watch this movie I would actually say the opposite. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Because I think what it did, I think what it did for me, unless of course you kind of like come from a background or your hard time involves things like domestic violence. Yes. uh, Maybe don't see it. But yes, if you have, if you're having a hard time, otherwise, (coughs) this is a great movie to kind of like stop thinking about yourself for like two hours and just like immerse yourself into like this wider problem and this like really amazing kind of thought process of these women trying to deal collectively with this big problem that's literally killing people and like yeah i mean kind of seeing how it's inspired by true events based off of a book it's it just blows my mind that like the whole thought process and i also okay something made me mad about this the amount of flack i've seen from people saying that this movie is like woke because of the title and the director actually not it is about a story of like women trying to get away from domestic violence it's like not really a it's not like a feminist movie it's literally like a survival movie yeah this is real life yeah it's real life i love how someone was like i i saw this on imdb because i looked up the reviews because i want to see what people are thinking yeah one guy's like oh this is made up i'm like what do you mean yeah what world do you live in what world do you live in that like that's made up yeah like what are you 
Who are your parents? I need to talk to them. Yeah, I know. It's like, dude, you're the problem here. You're, this is why this kind of movie has to exist. You're literally that one guy in the movie that everyone hated. Yeah. It's like, come on. Like, go go do your homework. Uh, yeah. Read a book. Read a book. Actually, just, yeah, read a book. So anyway. Goodness. Uh, don't what? believe what you hear about this being like, you know, some big, like, feminist movement yes. um, or yes. anything. If that's the kind of thing that you won't watch a movie over. Because that's not what's going on at oh, all. Yeah. I mean, movies being political is a whole different topic. It's a whole different topic, but this one's not it. No. This one's not it. If you have the guts to actually, like, look at bigger, wider issues and to actually, like, have some empathy for some things, this is, like, a movie that you should see. Yes. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, again, if you come from a background where you have dealt with domestic abuse, don't. Yeah, but if you want, I if you owe want so much like, credit, we give you so much credit. Yeah, you, we would, we totally would, because it's real. Like the the effects that they put in here, the emotion, the acting, it's incredible. I know people who have gone through it, and it's uh, and the conclusion that them. they come to is also just heart wrenching. Oh yeah, but like, yeah. oh my gosh, I love it so much. <laughs> it's a it's such well fil- made film. Um, got also got also also got nominated for best picture, so I'm yeah. so glad I did. Um, yeah. And it's one of those movies where it's kind of sound weird, but I can keep, I can watch it over and over again. I probably could too. Because it's real. It's, it's real. It's real, and the topic will always, unfortunately, be relevant. Yeah. I mean, it's like I don't want to say it, it's it's gotten better, but uh, I, I mean, more recent. It's it's still based on on events of like more recent history. Yeah, I mean, which is the really yeah. sad part to think about. Yeah. So. And you know, people living like we can't deal with a lot of like Mennonite issues. Uh, like, I mean, maybe we can, but like as people kind of living out here, yeah. that's kind of like, if you know anything about Amish and Mennonites and stuff, it's just, you don't have a lot of influence in those spheres, but Holy crap. You can always like aid people that walk through that. Yes, and like exactly. help do your be, part be, to help. actually be a good member of society. Be the solution. Don't be, be the, the solution. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's kind of my biggest takeaway from it. Um, it really just kind of helped clear my mind for like a while. And I appreciated that about this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Um, <laughs> Dude, this, oh my, this episode's gotten weird. This episode's gotten weird, but kind of real. I feel like we're just venting at this point. We're just point venting now. at this point. <laughs> we, are, yeah, we have a very long week, so yeah. give us a break. Yeah. All right, Ashton. What you, what, you, what you watching? Okay, something a little happier that we've both been watching. Okay, yes, please. Uh, How I Met Your Father season two. Dude. So here's here, here's the tragedy. We actually filmed a whole, or we recorded a whole review for season one, and what that happened? as well as a few other episodes uh, got deleted by no kind of like definitely not doing of laptop. our own, but OneDrive kind of screwed me over. So <laughs> we are uh, we we didn't really talk too much about season one, and like I think the biggest conclusions was that we both kind of came to was it is great on its own. Uh, you can't really remake How I Met Your Mother, but for what it is, it's like brilliant. Yes, absolutely. That's kind of the mutual decision I think we both came to. Uh, and season two, what what have you thought so far? So I'm just looking at movies I've seen. Um, no, season two is it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I like honestly like we both love like half an hour sitcoms you can just watch. Yeah, for, like 22 minutes. Um, it's. It's it's a lot of fun. I think the main reason why I love it so much is because the characters are actually kind of are actually genuinely genuinely funny. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a couple of people who don't like the show because they love the uh, the like original How I Met Your Mother. But honestly, I think like I said, On Its Own is really good. When you put it to the original show, it's not that great. Well, it's it's still good. It's not like it's bad. It's just like you comparing it. Obviously, it's like your it's like your favorite child, and then another one comes along. Dang. Uh, um, sorry, to all those middle <laughs> middle childs. I got real for a sec. Um, yeah, no, I think Hilary Duff is pretty great as Sophie in, in the in the lead role, uh, and I feel like we're getting to a point in the season where it's actually gonna ramp up. Yeah, especially with the last episode. So I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. Sam, yeah, I think you know comparing the only thing you can comp- compare this season to really is the last season. Again, if you try to compare it to How I Met Your Mother, uh, if you were a fan of that show. You're going to be like, or if you're like a hardcore fan of that show, you're going to be like, what is this really? Uh, but it's not trying to be like the same thing. It's trying to do like a different, more day appropriate thing. 
and yeah i would agree like i think season two i'm enjoying it a lot more than i did season one because season one was kind of like the introduction try to get to know the characters and then let's kind of hop into the drama and season two is kind of like oh let's hop right into the drama and i don't know it's just like the whole the whole drama of this show is how i met your father what's the journey what's the story how we got there what decision what bad decisions did i make along the way and did all these other people do so that's kind of how how i met your mother worked too and yeah i mean i've really enjoyed this season a lot so far i mean there's some where it's just like that was a little that joke was a little cringy you know but it's a sitcom, so you give it grace for that. Yeah, like sitcoms are gonna be cringy, yeah. whether you like it or not. Like I, I was, I'm rewatching Friends, and that show's so cringy. <laughs> oh my goodness, you have no idea how cringy that is. Um, but it also still really good. People love that show. They so. do. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to uh, the rest of the season. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a review on that, so it doesn't. So it, hopefully, it doesn't get deleted again. Dang, I would be. I would cry. I would actually cry. Do you know how many episodes? How many episodes did we record at your grandparents' house that I got deleted? Like three or four? I think we recorded three. We uploaded one of them, the Multiverse of Madness review. Which, if that one got deleted, I I don't even know what I would have done. I would have been so upset. You would have quit the pod. Yeah. Even though that episode to this day only has like two or three views. Who cares? Who cares? Um, hey, we're proud of our work. We are. We are. And uh, we're true artists. The movie trivia one was good. Yeah. Um, and then. We recorded the Moon Knight one and the How I Met Your Mother one. How I Met yeah. Your Father. Those ones got deleted. We never right. released so the then Moon then we Knight. only did two then. Yeah. So yeah. We did four. Or yeah, we were there for... We did four episodes and lost two. Yeah. That's so okay. half of our work. That's okay. Oh, well. Even uh, though that Moon Knight episode was pretty good. It was. It really was. Uh, yeah. Shoot. Well, Nat, what you watching? <laughs> I got a couple more things. Okay. And that's... that's I capped there. Um, so one, one of my favorite TV shows right now... Um, is Yellowstone. Ooh. Now, I know Ashley's seen a l- only a little bit of this, but season five is... <laughs> What's one word to describe season five? Season five is bombastic. It is so ridiculous, it, it hurts. But I can't stop looking away because it's like, you know like when you at like a family dinner or something and your cousins are fighting with their uncle, or I mean with their uncle and aunt? Dude, it's so freaking great. Um, Kevin Costner is bringing it. Everyone else is bringing it. Don't want to say too much because you should just go watch it. That's nice. what I, that's what I gotta say. Hey, quick, concise. Check it out if you have the balls, or maybe maybe you don't have. Balls also, it's pretty it's it pretty out. graphic and weird. So maybe yeah, think about it first. Maybe yeah. watch the, maybe watch the first episode. First episode is like a really big testing round because a lot happens in the first episode. Dang, yeah, it, it really that's why I love it so much. It really sets you up. Okay, okay. For, um, what the show's about? Hey, that's pretty dope. Ashton, what you watching? Uh, okay, I have something. I don't. I don't know if you started this one yet. Uh, but the Bad Batch. Oh, I'm not. But carry on. Okay, so I'm probably not gonna watch it. I've been actually. I I really think you should. Really? Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm convinced. Here's the thing. I was like, we talked about this. Mate, we're both kind of like getting a bit of Star Wars fatigue. Yeah. Uh, I'm I even, really am. Like, I've I've had Star Wars fatigue and Marvel fatigue for like probably two years now. Like, even well into, like, when we started the podcast, I was kind of fatigued of them both. Uh, <laughs> and, we didn't do very many, like, Star Wars episodes or anything. Yeah. Um, and we, honestly, we probably should because, you know, that's kind of something that's built up our nerdum a bit. But we just we just got to chill. We just got to chill. We need but break. it's like, I don't know. It's like that really bad relationship that you keep going back to because you, you just, like, it just, there's just something about it. There's just something about it. Okay, not that extreme, not that extreme. I apologize to people that that just got real uh it's like dang bro <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna stop with the analogies <laughs> it is for me uh, something where i'm scrolling through and i'm like mm, it's out okay I'll, I'll put it on i'll put it on and i also like i have other friends i talk to about it so it's like yeah you know like they know i'm really into this and i'm a big nerd so maybe it's also just like an expectation thing like oh they're gonna ask my thoughts and opinions on it so it's like okay okay uh yeah Bad Batch has been really good. Season two, a lot, a lot of season one felt like filler and world building, but season two, I almost completely forgot what happened in season one, and I feel like season two could like live off on its own, just because like there's so many things from the Clone Wars, so many like random really cool special episodes that they never finished, kind of like fulfilling and writing into, okay, that they tie up. Or they, they tie up the loose ends in Bad Batch. And it's like, oh my gosh, the way they did that was perfect. Or even in like bigger Star Wars canon, 
uh, because like they got rid of the extended universe. Uh, right. just, there's right. some big questions about how certain things happened. And I feel like that's kind of what Bad Batch at first was advertised to answer with like clones going into stormtroopers. It mm-hmm. And it's still kind of like doing a bit of that building now. Uh, a lot of like the, the a, a lot going into like what made the prequel so great um, is coming back out in this show. And Sweet. yeah, season two has been kind of pretty good so far. Okay, I'm convinced. I'll go watch it. <laughs> Dang. Um, actually, I, have, I, I thought I have another one. Okay. Um. Uh, so for we have a class that we have to do a, a assignment for. Yeah. And we have to like watch a movie or read a book or whatever. Um, we saw this movie when we, back in December, in January or December. Which one? Um, the whale. Oh yeah, December. We, we haven't s- talked about that. No, oh, gosh. we really haven't. We and haven't even talked about Avatar yet. Oh my gosh, okay. We have to, okay, okay, we'll do both of those. Okay. Well, we're just gonna go back, whale and then and then uh, Avatar. And puss and boots. And puss and boots. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, um, so I, I'm writing a paper on the whale. Okay. Uh, and I watched it again because I rented it again. And uh, I might have to change my top ten for the year, honestly. I think I have to as well. Uh, that yeah. The thing with doing lists for us is like we can change our minds really quickly. And here's the thing: like a lot of the movie, like we watched a lot of movies in 2022, but there were just it's a true. few that we hadn't seen before we like made our lists no that one we did i we saw the one okay we yeah we saw that one um but i mean there's some other ones that yeah. came out in 2022 yeah, and true. it's like okay well we didn't really think they would hit as hard as they did and they're better than a lot of the other ones that we actually talked about yeah. <laughs> anyway the whale yeah uh brandon frazier deserves an oscar but i understand if austin butler wins because he was really good as Elvis too yeah but yeah man dude this movie's so good uh it's based on a play um darren aronoff he directed this and um it's one of the most real movies I've seen in a long time, even though yeah. it's like has fictional stuff about it. But also like it talks about religion and for us, you know, obviously Bible question is. And um oh, it's just so good. Like I c it's a hard movie to watch. There are some visuals that aren't the best for people. Um in the first like twenty seconds of the movie. If you know if you know, you know. And um Yeah, give it a watch. It actually I don't know. It's hard it's hard to recommend this because it, it will, like, rub people the wrong way. But uh, I think it's okay if you go in with an open mind. Like, if you, yeah. you have to like movies to, like, you have to like movies to watch this movie. Yeah, if you're like, a big cinema nerd, then, again, kind of, like, similar with Marcel the Shell, except that one's, like, more G-rated. And that was, and that was, more, that was more artistic. That one's more one. artistic. Yeah. But, I mean, similar with this. Like, there's a lot of art that goes into it within the how they do art, the storytelling. Yeah. And, like, yeah, I mean, like, if you're more of a mature audience and you're the kind of person that would watch... Uh, Marcel the Shell, then you probably will enjoy this one too. Yeah, absolutely. A twenty four. Both of them are A twenty four. Dude, A twenty four. They popped off best this year. year dude. Best year of A twenty four. Best year ever. Best year. We got everything ever at once. That's probably gonna win best picture. Yep. Um, the whale, Marcel the Shell, um, Pearl. If you know what that is. And yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No insane movie. Honestly, I have an idea. We're both writing about different movies that we haven't talked. Uh, too too much about on the pod i think we should like as a podcast talk about our reflections within our assignments Mm. because we probably will do a lot more thinking on those movies a lot more reflection and have a lot more like detailed thoughts so what you're saying is we have to do this before the paper (laughs) well we can do it after the paper and then just dive into what we did for the paper but then, if we do it before the paper, then we have more thoughts. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and we could, re- and it's recorded. We could, so we can hear what we say. We well, should just hand in the podcast episode. Yeah, as our assignment. <laughs> just tell our professor. Honestly, I might saying. even, I might even ask him if we can do that. That'd be so dope. Uh, he dude. might like, he might dig it. He might dig it. Oh, dude, we gotta ask him next. Oh, can we just email him? Maybe. We should ask. Might have to. Might have to. Uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> podcast for a homework could you imagine dude <laughs> do imagine that'd be so might cool. have to might have to uh yeah okay um so avatar so avatar uh long story short we both we we started the night like oh my gosh oh my gosh screen x screen x and then we ended the night like this dude we were crying <laughs> we were really so sad we were, we were crying sobbing. in the theater <laughs> we were like literally holding each other sobbing the other two people we went with were just like that was, good. that was okay. That's that's okay. That's good. It's good. It's Avatar. It's late. Let's get home. And we're just like <laughs> round <bro>. two. Give <laughs> me more. Give me more. 
And I, I like pain. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I saw again. So yeah, I, how did it hold up on the second watch through? I think I enjoyed the second better the second time. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I kind of knew I was expecting. Because it was some points in the movie where I was like, okay, this is gonna go long, and a little you know convoluted, but uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. There's a reason. Didn't make my top ten. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, like we we both enjoyed it. I think we did talk about this in our um in our top tens mm-hmm. a lot, but yeah, you know, go listen to that episode for more details. Best visual fix I've seen in my life. Yeah, honestly, like really, really good. Uh, and hot take. I think it's still going to be a close Oscars, even with that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we'll talk more about that on the Oscar predictions episode. Yes. That's going to be a lot of fun. It will be. Uh, yeah. Go again. I don't, go I don't have much thoughts. thoughts. That I haven't said already on the pod. Yeah. Same. I think. Um, okay. One that we haven't talked about. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Brother. I have rewatched this movie like three times already. I know you've seen it a lot more. I've seen it twice. I just seen it twice. Twice? Yeah, oh, she just twice. I've seen it more. Okay. Yeah. It's cool good, guys. It's really good. I, I almost bought it yesterday. They only had DVD, so I was just like, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna Blu-ray. wait till I get Blu-ray. Gotta get the Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, but holy crap, it is. Go watch it. It surprised me about how good it is, and there's there's a lot to there's a lot of details to go into, so we won't go into like too too much because we're kind of getting a little late already. But it was it was phenomenal. Uh, the animation style, uh, how they blended 3D and 2D together. Perfection. And they didn't stick to, like, old ways of doing things. They, like, actually took risks with the story, with again, with the art direction, with the characters. They tied it in a little bit to the first movie, but honestly, I forgot all about the first movie. Who cares? No one really cared that much about that one uh, and just kind of, like, hopped into this. The amount of memes that have been made out of this movie already, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I really don't have any thoughts. I think you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, yeah, no, I, I I enjoy this movie. Um, I don't think it's going to be the Oscar, but I think it's, I think it's, I think it's going to be pretty close. Yeah. Who is the? Uh, we I have so I wrote down I got bored in class one day, so I typed out the entire uh, Oscar all the Oscars. nominations. Yeah, I remember. Um, where's uh, animated, animated, animated. Oh. Yeah, I think it's up here. Sorry. Um, I know Marcel Lachelle, Gilmiro de Toro's Pinocchio. Oh, right here. Anime feature. Uh, yeah, Gilmiro de Toro's Pinocchio. And then CB, or the CBs. Oh, I forgot oh. Turning Red was in the running. Uh, Turning Red's not great. I don't. I think compared to everything else. I, I haven't seen the CB, so I actually don't oh, know Oh, give it a watch. It's, it's, quite, it's quite fun. It's like How to Your Dragon Ball with a CB story. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Um, out of all of those, we'll talk about it on our pod, but yeah. I don't think Puss and Boots is going to win. I don't. I think... I think that one's gonna win. Really? Yeah, I don't think that one's gonna win. I that I think I know that, you want. I know I want that one to win, but I also genuinely think it will. I actually I don't care who wins I th- this one. I just hope. It's I not think I think we'll I think we'll be, we'll both be surprised, or else one of us will be absolutely right and rub it in the other's face, which I I give you full permission to do. I mean, hey, uh, we'll literally rub something in someone's face because uh, remember we did do shaving cream last year. And Shoot, I'm coming for vengeance because that stuff w- was so messy. Dang. It We're was. not doing shaving cream this year. I got a better punishment, but we'll talk about that on the predictions podcast. Ooh. Bet. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, real quick, I have one game. One game. Okay, I'm, I'm out of ideas, so uh, this is the last thing. Hi-Fi Rush. So if you're an Xbox Sorry? Us- user, uh, this is a game that kind of like caught everyone by surprise. But Xbox did like their their video thing and announced that they're dropping a game that day. I actually think you'd really enjoy it because the art style is really like fun. All right, all right. It's a rhythm game, rhythm. but it's a rhythm like I don't. I want to call it an RT, RPG. It's like a rhythm like kind of fight game. So like you attack on the beat, you dodge on the beat, you get like score bonuses. You go off the beat, you get hurt. Enemies attack on the beat, and like environmental stuff happens on the beat. So if you have good rhythm, you will ace this game. Like good timing. Like I played this game to train for Smash Bros. It is. It really kind of like gets your timing going and like what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and what you're feeling with your controller, engaging like three of the five senses. Okay, and right. it's just like a really interesting story. It's a, it's an Xbox exclusive and like PC, Xbox. I think. <laughs> but like, if you have one and you have Game Pass, like check it out. It's actually like really fun. I'll have to come over and play that one day, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Might have to. Is that it? I, feel, I think about things I watched. I mean, obviously there's things <clears> I 
skipped There's over. a lot of things, just because it's been a while. What did I watch? I think that's a lot of the notable ones. Like, we're probably going to go home and be like, oh, shoot, we forgot that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Um, But, yeah, I I think that's kind of, like, the gist of it. That's, like... A... Wait, there's one more thing that I did want to talk about. Oh, Mandalorian. About. Season oh, one, I, I didn't episode watch, one. I didn't watch it yet. I watched it. Pretty much the same thing going with the Bad Batch review, except it was episode one and hot take. I don't think it really captivated me as well as, like, the previous seasons did with their episode ones. But that's just me. That's my quick review. I'm waiting to watch the rest of it, but also <laughs> same vibes as I'm not like super committed this season. I can rant about the uh about the Mandalorian, <laughs> believe you me. Yep. Which I watch. There was <clears throat> one thing I wanted to talk about. It's it's an older movie too. I just want to talk about it. Okay. Where is it? But Disney Plus is being stupid. Dang. Wait, guys, I'll find this. Ashton, tell them a story. Tell the audience a story. Um <laughs> There once was a boy named Nat. Okay. And it, it, it it's late, so that's all my brain can come up with. I'm dude, pushing what, out my brain cells right dude, what now. Is, oh my goodness, I'm never going to find it. It's okay. Oh, I'll talk about like another thing. I should go for it. Um, I recently started playing through Assassin's Creed Odyssey again. Just because like, I don't know, we've been doing like a lot of study. Like the first time I played through that game, we were like talking about like New Testament stuff at my school. And yet like, the gospels and stuff and yes i know like that game takes place like 400 years before the gospels actually happened but like it also gives a lot of like background onto the culture of like what was going on in those days and it really was like oh my gosh like this is like kind of giving me some insight anyway i'm going through like a revelation class right now and that's kind of like some of the stuff that same vibes same vibes like still like 470 years before but like it's also like bringing it to life a little bit more in a way I don't know. I enjoy. I I like that game anyway. Also, I found out. I found it. What is it? Um, this movie is called Stay the Night. Oh, came out twenty twenty two, and um, here's a synopsis. It's um, a girl feels like an outcast at the time when dating apps and casual hookups are the new norm. However, she meets a professional athlete, uh, named Carter Stone, and she starts to wonder if he's the perfect solution to her problem. It's a, it's a rom-com. Nice. Um, but it has, uh, you know, uh, uh, Andrea Bang from uh, Kim's Convenience? She plays his daughter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, her. She's in that. She's oh, shoot. Spectacular. It's Dang. on Crave. Thanks for the Crave, by the way. Hey, I got you. Um, No, it's really good. I, that's what I want to talk about. Like, okay. It's it's a pretty, like, by-the-numbers rom-com. Okay. But no, which is really well-acted, and it's actually shot really well for a rom-com, which is something you'll see very good every... Uh, Every day, something you don't see every day. It was all the hot takes. It took it out of us. Hey, dude, I have so many hot takes. I feel like you're. I feel like we have. I have a lot, way more than you do. Don't even get me started yeah, on people I like that. hating old movies. Don't even get me started. I believe that we should do a hot takes episode. <laughs> we just do. We just did it. <laughs> we we should go more in depth. Yeah, screw yeah. you, comic book movie people. Think you're all that because you watch comic book movies. <laughs> think you're so cool. Podcast. Think you're the big guy on the on the street. Think your think your parents are proud of you. <laughs> Someone get the fire extinguisher. <laughs> oh my goodness, the storm room's building. Are you overcompensating for something? I don't know what you're doing anymore. <laughs> Dang, this guy. But yeah, you're right. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. And just because you just because you don't haven't seen a movie doesn't mean you can't like it. Give it a shot. That's true. Just because you don't like anti-heroes doesn't mean John Wick is a bad movie, you trash bag person. <laughs> now it's getting personal. Uh, <laughs> you think you're so cool because you watch Spider-Man in the basement? Think you're so cool because you watch Batman the Animated Series every day? Think you're so cool? What okay. a show. <laughs> think you're so cool your Vessies on? <laughs> I like my Vessies. I'm not talking What's about going you. On? <laughs> <laughs> you think it's so cool because you watch a, watch like six two seasons of a TV show every day? You think you're so cool? <laughs> I I think we need therapy. Uh, <laughs> okay, I got one more. I got one more, and then we'll end it. I just I just remember this one. Uh, <laughs> Outer Banks. Boo! <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> okay, Outer Banks is actually good. I'm a sucker for... Actually, I wasn't with <coughs> Riverdale. That got really weird. But I'm a sucker for a really well-told, like, story. And I find teenage, like, romance comedy, action comedies, like, kind of cringy. Hey, but no this spoilers. one's still I, I will see me. season one. 
I I haven't seen season three yet. Okay. Season two was pretty good. Okay, bet. Season one was better. Okay. Season three, I'm excited for. I've been waiting for my brother to have free time so we could watch this together. So I feel less bad because he's actually a teenager, and he, we just both have been swamped. So hopefully this week I'll, I will start. <laughs> anyway, good show. If you have Netflix, and you're not on the hype. Do it. Also, like, <laughs> like I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> You think you know movies because you watch Marvel movies? <laughs> you, think, you think you know the Marvel movies when you ever get the comics? <laughs> Bro's popping off. Scumbag. <laughs> Let us know if we should do a whole dedicated episode to hot takes. And also let us know uh, how hot you want it to be. So shirts off. Yeah. We will do <laughs> lapel mics and a car wash. Oh, sheesh. Or the hot tub pod. That could be oh, hot takes in the hot tub. Do we have access to someone's hot tub? Just go to the public pool. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> that this, this this community center is like, oh, yeah, you can just set up like uh, cameras by the hot tub with, with, with like miners in the background. No big deal. People shirtless. No big deal. When the weather gets better, I actually have an idea for how we could do a hot tub pod. That would be really funny. I'm very interested. Yeah. Also, um... I do a car pod. Ooh, yeah. Backseat? Carpool podcast. <laughs> I was trying to make a funny thing. We had the carpool karaoke, but I couldn't. Ah, uh, yeah. Not on the spot, at least. Dang. I'll, I'll, I'll try it when we do it. Carpool critics was already taken. Oh, man. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I think I'm done. I think you're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a weird place, guys. I'm sorry. That's never done. Oh my goodness. Wakes up and chooses violence every day. <laughs> okay, one more thing. Okay. okay. One more thing. Do it. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? You think you're so cool because you watch one movie every year and you're like, oh, actually, Christopher Nolan isn't one of the best directors ever made. Um, ever, I mean, ever made. Ever. <laughs> ever. His parents messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Also, did we? I love. I know it's a really douchebag thing, but like, who asked, guys? We don't. Who asked? I didn't ask for your opinion about this movie. I said I wouldn't see it. Okay. Our, our I, podcast is literally built up on this. I don't want to know <laughs> what you thought about the movie, even though you haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. If but, you haven't seen it, don't tell dude, us. Dude, like literally, I was. I told someone. I, I told someone like two days ago. Oh yeah, I want to see Cocaine Bear, and like that means so stupid. Who would like watch a movie like that? It's like you know. It's trash. I'm like, you haven't seen it, man. Probably the same person that had that same exact thought about Violent Night because I know for a fact he did. Yeah, yeah. guy we're talking yeah. about. Screw you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me enjoy. I literally, we literally can't enjoy anything. Can't have nice things. Literally can't have nice things. This is why. I just want to watch Santa beat up a bunch of mercenaries with a candy cane. Is that so much to ask? Actually, a really good movie. I'm so sorry did for we, the headphones users. Did we even talk about that one? I don't even know. No, we did. We did. In our Christmas episode. Violent Night. It was so Violent good. Night. It was so okay. good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, person. And everyone else. But like, yes, but also everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> we should watch Last of Us. There, there are some days when I'm just so heated. <laughs> you have no idea. Ready to pop off. We could record a hot takes episode like right now. No, I think I need to cool down a little bit. That's fair. We're also gonna, the, the episode's going to be E. <laughs> e rated E. E for explicit. <laughs> Patreon subscriber exclusive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Subscribe to our Patreon, too. <laughs> yeah. Please. I don't, I don't even know if this episode has a sponsor or not. It's not about us. Yeah. Put Patreon forward slash. Pa- there's the final podcast. What he said. Also, Instagram, <laughs> Gmail, all the normal stuff. It's like down in the description. It's always down in the description. It's always down there. We always say it in each episode and it probably just takes up more time. So go. Well, we'll, we'll probably continue saying it. But like for now, let, we, we talked a lot. Let's just. Yeah. Yeah, guy we're talking about. <laughs> Thanks for taking the words out of our mouth. We don't even have enough words to even like talk about our Gmail address or Instagram handle. There's there a final are, podcast on there Instagram. There aren't enough words to describe this person. <laughs> <laughs> Some people just want to watch the world burn. That's the tea. And yeah, that's what a Christopher Nolan person would... Ah, whatever. I can't even speak anymore. <laughs> okay, guys. See you next... Till next time. I'm Nat. And I'm Ashton. And we are the nerds in T.
tears. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so heated right now. <laughs> <laughs> we are the nerds in, in flannel. flannel. Peace. Or not to you, though. Yeah, screw you, man. <laughs>